Which electric SUV is better, the Tesla Model Y or the Hyundai Kona EV? I'm Jonathan Stewart, and welcome to Cleaner Watt. The Hyundai Kona EV is one of the most underrated EVs currently available and is an excellent choice for many families. But just how does it compare to Tesla's newest electric SUV, the Model Y? Let's compare the two vehicles head to head, starting with their purchase prices. Currently, there are two versions of the Model Y available. The long range all wheel drive variant for $52,990 and the Model Y performance variant for $60,990. The Kona EV comes in three variants, the Kona EV SEL front-wheel drive, the Kona EV Limited front-wheel drive, and the Kona EV Ultimate front-wheel drive. The vehicle starts at $37,190 for the SEL trim level and goes up to $45,400 for the Ultimate trim level. As I've done in previous videos, I always like to calculate the cost per mile of range for an electric vehicle to help figure out just how much value the vehicle offers. So you can see here in this chart that the Kona EV SEL trim front wheel drive has the very lowest cost per mile of range at $144.14. It is really important to note that the standard range Model Y will be coming out next year in 2021 and that will start somewhere around $40,000 and I estimate will have a range of somewhere between 240 and 250 miles. It will be good to actually see how that compares to the Kona then when that comes out but for now these models are what we have to compare. Now I'd like to take a look at some actual purchase costs and go over not only the purchase price but also sales tax, potential monthly payment, and the finance cost for purchasing each one of these vehicles. For this example, we're going to compare the long range Model Y to the Kona Ultimate front wheel drive. So as you can see from this chart, the Model Y is $7,670 more at the time of purchase for the vehicle. It'll cost you a little bit more in sales tax and if you put $5,000 down and you finance this for six years at 3% interest, you'll see there that the monthly payment will be about $125 more for the Model Y over the Kona EV. One other really important thing to point out is the Kona EV is still eligible for the full $7,500 federal tax credit. So that would actually bring the cost difference from $7,670 to somewhere around $15,000 price difference. So now that we've actually seen that the Kona is quite substantially a cheaper vehicle than the Model Y, I'd like to look at some of the features that you get with the Model Y that you don't get with the Kona EV. So for this example, once again, we're going to be comparing the ultimate trim of the Kona EV versus the long range all wheel drive Model Y. So the Model Y comes standard with a power lift gate where the Kona EV does not. Included with both the Kona EV and the Model Y is a basic level two driver's assist slash autopilot system. The Kona EV only has heated front seats, whereas the Model Y has heated front and rear seats. One of the features that is found on the Kona EV but not on the Model Y is a heads-up display. Both the Model Y and the Kona offer wireless phone charging, but only the Model Y offers a web browser and video streaming services. If you want GPS navigation and the ability to control your car through your phone app, the Kona EV gives you that for three years free, and then after that you have to pay a monthly fee. The Model Y includes both GPS navigation and the phone app connectivity without paying any extra any time in the future. Both vehicles at this trim level also include premium audio systems. One of the biggest advantages to owning a Tesla over a Kona or any other EV is the fact that Teslas are able to receive over-the-air updates and improve their software and Tesla is constantly rolling out new updates and adding great new features. Recently through these over-the-air software updates for example Tesla has added features like Sentry Mode and Dash Cam. One other really important thing to point out about the Model Y is that it has a heat pump instead of the standard resistive heating system found in the Kona EV. This will definitely lead to a lot less range loss in the cold and wintry months. 
Now I'd like to take a look at both the interior and exterior dimensions and see just how the two vehicles compare. So when you compare the exterior measurements of the Model Y to the Kona EV, you'll see there that the Model Y is 22.4 inches longer, it is 12.9 inches wider, 2.7 inches higher, the wheelbase is 11.4 inches bigger, and the ground clearance is just under a half inch taller. More importantly though, if you look at the interior dimensions, you'll see just how much more space the Model Y offers over the Kona EV. The Model Y gives you more headroom in both the front and rear of the vehicle. The Model Y gives you slightly more legroom in the front seat and substantially more legroom in the rear seats, giving an additional 7.1 inches of legroom over the Kona EV. In the front seat of the Model Y, you have almost an inch more of shoulder room, and in the back seat of the Model Y, you have about a half inch less shoulder room than the Kona EV. One other thing that's good to look at is the payload and the curb weight of these vehicles. You'll see there that the Model Y weighs about 4,416 pounds, whereas the Kona EV weighs 3,836 pounds. When you take a look at the gross vehicle weight, you can see there that the Model Y has a slightly lower payload capacity than the Kona EV. Now let's look at another really important factor, and that is how much cargo space the vehicles have. So with the seats folded down, the Kona EV has 45.8 cubic feet of cargo space, whereas the Model Y has a nice 68 cubic feet of cargo space. The Model Y has substantially more cargo room in the back and is going to be a better vehicle for carrying luggage and other cargo. Now let's take a look at the performance differences between the two vehicles. So obviously the Model Y is going to be a much quicker and much faster vehicle than the Kona EV. The Kona EV is not made to be a sports car or a sports SUV, but rather it's supposed to be just kind of an economical EV. And so when you compare these, of course, it's not even close. The Kona EV has a top speed of about 104 miles an hour and can go zero to 60 miles per hour in 7.6 seconds. The Model Y performance can go zero to 60 miles per hour in 3.5 seconds, which is less than half the time it takes for the Kona EV. Now let's compare the range and efficiency between the vehicles. The Model Y Long Range and the Model Y Performance variants both have a 74 kilowatt hour battery. The Model Y Long Range all-wheel drive variant is able to go about 316 miles on a charge according to the EPA and the Model Y Performance with the 20 inch wheels is able to go about 280 miles. If you do a calculation based off this EPA range and the battery size, you can figure out how many watt hours per mile the Model Y needs. You can see there that the Model Y long range variant has a watt hours per mile consumption of 234. And it can travel 4.27 miles per kilowatt hour of battery capacity. When you compare this to the Kona EV, which is a very efficient vehicle, especially compared to other SUVs on the market, ones that we've talked about before, it is still slightly less efficient than the Model Y long range all wheel drive variant. The Kona EV requires about 248 watt hours per mile and can travel about 4.03 miles per kilowatt hour of battery capacity. Another really important factor when you're looking at an EV is how long it takes to charge. So let's compare the charging speeds between the two vehicles. The Model Y has a max charge rate of 250 kilowatts, whereas the Kona EV only has a max charge rate of around 77 kilowatts. Based on some information from evdatabase.com, I estimate that the Model Y will take about 25 minutes to add 221 miles of range or to go from 10% state of charge to about 80% state of charge. If you were to connect the Kona EV to that same charger, it would take 44 minutes to go from 10% to 80% state of charge and would only add 180 miles as opposed to 221 miles added in the Model Y. So as you can see, the Model Y is able to add more miles in less time and will get you back on the road in a much quicker time. On top of all that, the Tesla Model Y has access to Tesla's amazing supercharging network that is both fast and convenient. Now let's compare the warranties between the two vehicles. For the Model Y Long Range and Model Y Performance variants, Tesla guarantees the battery for eight years and 120,000 miles. 
This warranty guarantees that during this period, your battery will maintain at least a 70% state of charge. The Kona EV comes with a lifetime battery warranty for the original owner only. If you sell the vehicle, then a 10-year, 100,000-mile warranty applies. This lifetime warranty is pretty good, but they do not guarantee any state of charge percentage. So I imagine that if you hit 70% state of charge with the Kona EV, they would not replace your battery. Tesla guarantees their powertrain on the Model Y for eight years or 120,000 miles and has a comprehensive warranty of four years and 50,000 miles for the rest of the vehicle. The Kona EV has a longer period of time that they cover their powertrain, but it includes only 100,000 miles instead of the 120,000 miles. And the comprehensive warranty for the Kona EV is five years, 60,000 miles, so it is slightly better in that aspect. Now let's talk about driver's assist and autonomy features on these vehicles. The Kona Ultimate trim level does offer a level 2 driver's assist suite that is comparable to what Tesla offers in their basic autopilot suite. And if you want to pay an additional $7,000, you can get features like navigate on autopilot and smart summon. Plus, coming soon will be automatic driving on city streets. Sometime in the future, when Tesla reaches full self-driving feature complete, these features will roll out to the Tesla fleet and they will receive these through over-the-air software updates. The Kona was never meant to be a full self-driving vehicle, whereas the Tesla Model Y should have all the hardware necessary. So here's how these vehicles stack up based on the metrics that we just talked about. The Kona EV does have a lower cost of ownership, but the Model Y has more technology and more features. The Model Y also offers more passenger room and cargo room. It has better performance, better range and efficiency, and a much faster charging speed. The Kona, however, does have a slightly better warranty than the Tesla Model Y, so we give it the check on that one. So is the Model Y really worth the price difference over the Kona EV? In my opinion, it is. The Model Y, as we mentioned, has a lot more technology and convenience features, and the Model Y will get better over time. On top of all that, when Tesla does release their full self-driving software, the Tesla Model Y will be capable and will have all the technology necessary to complete that. Either way though, no matter which vehicle you choose, both are great options. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and that you learned something as well. If you are not yet subscribed to the channel, please consider subscribing. And if you do subscribe, if you click the bell icon, you'll be notified when new videos are published. Also, if you did like the video, if you could please consider clicking the like button so other people can find the video. And if you'd like to support this channel and help me make more content in the future, consider joining the Patreon community I've set up and I'll have a link in the description below. Thank you so much.